Greetings friends, Chaos here. Welcome to Terracore episode 17, where the Clothier is unfortunately no more. He was just at- oh, there he is. <laughs> well, that's an intro. <laughs> Welcome to Terracore. Anyway, since in the last episode I got the Tsunami and a lot of you left comments saying that I should try the Ranger class, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. So I'm going to be going on some adventures, getting gear, getting new weapons, more importantly starting a Chlorophyte farm. I think that should be probably top priority. We have a new mining world today so I'll probably speed run all of the bosses and start mining some Chlorophyte and get that growing. But first, before we get to any of that, we still have plushies on sale. There's less than one week left, and the campaign is not yet fully funded. We need to sell at least 200 of them for the campaign to be funded. Otherwise, if we don't sell enough, the campaign gets cancelled, nobody gets a plushie, everybody gets refunded, and sad days all around could really use your support on the channel and if you're interested in picking up a plushie it would really help me out ah i always love logging into a fresh new mining world there's just something so refreshing about it and it's rather enjoyable so i'm gonna head off to the left over here i know that i said i was gonna speed run some bosses and we will get to that but i want to see what kind of dungeon we have on this world for some reason, Terracor has had a bit of bad luck with dungeons lately. So we have three different colors of dungeons, right, in Terraria. And theoretically, at least, all three colors have an equal chance of spawning anytime you make a new world. Well, for some reason, on the Terracor server, the past few times that we've made mining worlds... All of the dungeons have been pink. Now, I don't have anything against the color pink. I rather like the color itself, actually. But, in terms of textures for the blocks and walls and furniture, j green is just far superior. Even blue is better than pink. Alright, I actually picked the right side. Fantastic. So, uh, since we got a snow biome here, we'll definitely hit the dungeon. Um, hopefully, this will not be a pink dungeon again <laughs> um but we'll see <laughs> i only make one mining world every time we do a mining world reset and i just go with what we get because i don't have the time to spend going through hours and hours of re-rolling worlds to get exactly what we want and hey it's blue it's not ideal green but it's not pink and i'm gonna take it because i'm the first one here so i might as well um, so I'm going to harvest a little bit of this, but then we'll get to uh, speed rushing the bosses so that we can get some chlorophyte for our farm. Well, um, that's all the bosses done. <laughs> not, uh, not how I expected that to finish up there. <laughs> oh, God, I'm in trouble. All right, everything is back, resituated. As usual, I collect all of my tombstones every time I die, so I can keep a running track of how many times I've died on the Terracore server, and I'm going to be revealing that at the very, very end of the series. 
Oh, I want to catch this blue jay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what we got from our, our loot bags. Probably nothing that we need, to be honest. All right, so I have 50 chlorophyte ore, which I figure ought to do it for now. Got some other goodies while we were down there. A lot of copper, which is important because I'm going to be using a lot in an upcoming build. But I don't know if you can hear this in the background. Shino, my dog, is currently whining. And I'm going to take a quick break, play some fetch with him, and then we're going to start the chlorophyte farm. Thanks, fairy. Very helpful. Anywho, here we are on the farming world for the first time in a very long time. And man, there's a lot of work I still need to do down here, but I'm very excited for it. Lots of different projects. I am very happy to be back on the TerraCore server and I can't wait to finish this up. Now, off camera, I went ahead and I built and designed our chlorophyte farm right here. And it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The thing about this farm is it might work a little bit slower than the chlorophyte farms you're used to seeing because there's a lot less mud and it can't spread in all four directions. But the thing about this farm is it will be fully AFKable. So what we're going to do is ride very, very slowly on a minecart using the block swap mechanic that was added in 1.4 we are going to place a weight down on the left click button of our mouse and whenever there's chlorophyte in the mud like we have here you'll see that we're going to be able to just go over it and block swap it and i should probably go a little bit slower than this so I got to find the sweet spot, but essentially that's how this farm is going to end up working. It's going to be a slow spread, but anytime it does, I'll take the mud that is in my inventory right now and replace it with the chlorophyte that spreads, adding the chlorophyte to my inventory and very slowly converting this. This is important for me that it's AFKable because I've got a lot of video editing to do. I've got to go walk Shino and there's a lot of stuff that I could just benefit from an AFK farm. In fact, I'm going to go take Shino for a walk right now and I'm going to let this run for an hour or so and we'll see how much ore we've got. I have left this running for two hours now and I have a grand total of exactly 32 additional <laughs> chlorophyte ore. All right, so we get about 16 an hour from this thing, which is absolutely horrendously slow. So I still want to make this AF cable, but the solution is going to have to be more. More of this. A lot of work to do with that. But... I need to make sure that they're not so close that we hit the chlorophyte cap. I think for now, I'm going to finish gearing up by doing it the old fashioned way. And then I will build the farm for other uses. I want to use the blocks for building and I'm going to be using a lot of bullets and arrows. So I still need the farm. But for now, let's do this the old fashioned way. <laughs> what was that blue? <clears throat> Break it. You sure? No. No. You sure? No. Yep. You sure? No. You sure? No. Do it. You sure? No. <laughs> oh, you can't shoot them anymore. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, you I forgot. I forgot that update. Lame. What? <laughs> Wait. You, did you try to? <laughs> Ooh, a chest. What's in here? Eh. I'll steal the potions. Oh, my God. Didn't we make it a bannable offense to loot a chest and not remove it when it was done? How did you know I didn't remove it? Because all you stole was the potions. And you yeah, I there. trashed the rest. You weren't there long enough. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I've come across a lot of empty chests. 
Yeah, yeah, they're all Cushion. <laughs> Seriously. I do it once. A once. week, at least. The first time, once. Oh my god, I'm about to die. Karma. Huh. There goes Cushion being a villager again. <laughs> a quick clip it. Use it for Monopoly. <laughs> oh. I was like, wait, how? I don't even understand this! Oh, I said that. Huh. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? Ooh. It two shot me. Yes. Oh, God. I was like, oh, oh my God, it's the naked chaos. <laughs> um. <laughs> this is as much clothing as I've been wearing the entire time. No, no, you didn't have the vest on. All you had was the black swim trunks. It just You just don't look right without the Chaos brand helmet. <laughs> Capitalization. Why oh, isn't no. Kyushin defending me anymore? <laughs> I knew it! As soon as I wandered off, I go to do something else. Yeah, he looks good. <laughs> hey, hey, chaos. There's a pot and oh, chaos sure. is just <laughs> just friggin... Did you see that bat? I did. <laughs> just go through the. Okay. Hey, hey, look, I got you that, that light pet. I was. Oh, I was wow. Sitting. It's see? so bright. Look how much it brights up this. Lights up this place. Brights up this place. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, there's a big pocket right here. Who wants to do a blood moon? Do you um, have a choice? I can put the uh, the gnome back down. I mean, down. there's always a choice. I right. can use a bloody tear, or I can not use a bloody tear. <laughs> oh God, Kishin. Oh, yep. Just that... you, you guys would want to know oh, the uh, Terraria X Don't Starve Together comes out on the 18th. By the way, just what? saying. What? 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 Comes what out in it? six days. The 12th. Uh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think back. you'll find it's the 13th, but anyway. Okay, so here we are back in the farming world. Although this time we're on the surface, the reason I chose this world is because it is a corrupt world. So we've got some keys of knights here, some chests here, and hopefully within 20 kills we can get the item we're after which specifically is the putrid scent. I'm hoping to combine it with this magic quiver and get the stalker's quiver for my next set. So we're just going to go ahead and get started and hopefully it'll just drop one on the very first mimic. I kind of doubt it. It's only a 20% chance to get. <laughs> we'll see how lucky I am. All right, there we go. Putrid scent. Fantastic. So I have these two to combine now once I get back to base. I have armor to craft as well. We also got the dart rifle. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using it um, just because crafting darts. I'll think about it. I really love the way that it looks though, and it's not a bad weapon. Let me know in the comments if you think I should be using the dart rifle or if the tsunami will be enough. So we should be good to go for the Plantera fight. I just need to farm more chlorophyte to make some arrows. So let's quickly combine our gear and craft our new armor. I turn my back for literally 10 seconds to grab a tissue and blow my nose because I've had some allergies today. And, well, these guys decided that that wasn't going to happen. Um, I should be able to deal with them with my backup gear. It's just really annoying. <sighs> Other things that we do for you guys. So, I have here three Ranger Emblems, 
We're going to save one for the future because we can't go past an adventure emblem yet. We're going to wear another one. I'm going to reforge them, don't worry. And then the third one we're going to combine with these souls here for an Avengers emblem. And we'll wear these two when we fight Plantera. Uh, we've also got the Putrid Scent and the Magic Quiver. So now we have a Stalker's Quiver. I also wanted to make an Endless Quiver just in case they run out of ammunition. That way I'm still able to use the Tsunami. And then last but not least our armor just make sure that i'm actually doing the right set and here we go pretty good stuff and then we should be ready to go for the fight i'm still not certain about the dart rifle again let me know in the comments what you guys think i'm not sure if i'm going to fight the rest of these mimics i might give them to somebody else to fight as well up next i wanted to start building it's been a long time since i've done any building on the server and while i do love this raggedy house that we have i'd love to upgrade to something new so what i'm thinking about doing is coming over here and doing some landscaping on this side of the island the plan for the main base is to have a structure built inside of a large tropical volcano as if the heat and steam from the volcano is powering a large subterranean structure. I won't have time to build it all in one go, so I'm going to be doing section by section over the next few weeks, and while I do, feel free to leave ideas and suggestions of your own in the comment section. I have a good idea of what I want to do, but I'm always open to hearing what you have in mind as well. So when it comes to building a large landscaping project like this, I usually rely on T-Edit. Building natural looking shapes in the air can be difficult, and T-Edit's ability to just draw freely with blocks is a huge asset for stuff like this. But obviously, TerraCore is a survival-only server that runs 24-7, so I don't have that option available. So when it comes to building large landscaping projects like a volcano in-game, I don't try to get the correct shape on the first go. Instead, I place more blocks than I will need, like I did here, making a large lump of stone. Then I start carving out stone from the sides to form the shape of the volcano. Think of it like this. With T-Edit, it's more like painting. I can put my brush down anywhere on the canvas and it'll make a line of blocks. So I paint the volcano shape. But when doing the same thing directly in Terraria, I can't just paint a line of blocks in the air. I have to treat it more like a sculpture where I start with more than I need and then carve away my desired shape. Or at least I personally find it easier that way. After I'm happy with the larger volcano, I add a smaller one to the left. The idea is to interconnect these two via builds that will be on top and within the volcanoes. Lastly, I have to start detailing. I'm going to be starting off relatively basic for now, just smoothing out the blocks with a hammer and adding a little bit of block variety. But as I continue the base over the following episodes, I'm going to be adding more and more detail to the environment. And while I wrap all of this up, if you've made it this far into the video, I just wanted to thank you all very much. I really do appreciate it. If you've been enjoying this video and the series, and you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. It tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job, which helps my channel get promoted to new viewers, and it makes it more likely that you'll get notified of future videos. Thank you. Unfortunately, that thunderstorm prevented me from recording the rest of the volcano building process because I didn't want to trigger any seizures or have to give a warning or anything like that. I just don't like the way that the thunderstorm looks in a time lapse. Hopefully you guys understand, but I was running short on time, so I did keep on working. And for the most part, I finished up what I wanted to do with the volcano today. And I'm pretty happy with it all in all. Um, so we've added quite a bit of texture here in block variation. We have hardened sand mixed with sandstone, mixed with sand and stone, all of which are painted gray. Some bits of jungle grass just for a little bit of life texture. We've got a different blend of walls, stone walls and magma walls in the background here to give that volcanic look. 
and I went ahead and made a second smaller volcano over here. I have big plans for both of these. I know it doesn't look like much now, but big, big plans for the future. Now this area over here, massive work in progress. I still want to make kind of like a lava badlands or something over here, but I am out of time for today's episode. It's been a very, very busy one. We made a farm for Chlorophyte. We completely geared up for Plantera, which of course we will be fighting in the next episode. And then we made this big volcano here and that's going to be the start of our future base. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. And remember, we still have plushies on sale. There's less than one week left. We are nearly funded and it would really help me out if you guys pre-ordered one. Until the next episode, however, thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.